So in front of us here we have an example of a, a cutting edge modern single person racing shell. Uh, the boat consists of a few main components, is the hull, is the main portion of the boat which really represents the, the shape the athlete puts into the water to race in and supports them. We have the foot stretcher assembly with the feet, um, unlike what you would assume, the feet are actually attached, the shoes are attached to the boat permanently. Uh, we have the sliding seat which allows the athlete to really utilize their torso and their legs to create power to move the boat. And then we have the outrigger, uh, which is a carbon fiber structure that allows them to, to hold the oar locks out here where the oars would go through to move the boat forward. The oars are also much like the shells, all made out of uh, high quality carbon fiber construction. Uh, the oars obviously mount through the oar locks. And on the oars, the athletes have a number of choices of, of spoon shape, of staff, shaft stiffness and of length. And they'll actually alter the inboard-outboard ratio or the geometry of the oar to create different load ratios and different gearing so they can propel the boat at the fastest possible speeds. Okay, so one of the unique things about rowing shells, unlike other boats, is they're inherently unstable. Meaning, as soon as you sit in it, if you don't have oars in it, you'll be upside down in a fraction of a second. So you really have to picture rowing like a tightrope walker. We have oars that are effectively the pole that a tightrope walker would use to stabilize themselves on that wire. And they're very long, they're very narrow, they're very unstable but that's really where the skill of the athlete comes in. So they may make it easy looking like it's simple to row out there, but if they let go of the oars, they'll be upside down before you blink your eyes. So depending on the boat class, there's actually three different methods used to steer rowing shell. In a small boat like this, in a single, it's the athlete pulling harder or less on one of the two oars, which steers the boat down the course, and it's a fairly narrow lane to stay in when you're rowing, so it's quite a challenge. In the medium-sized boats, the pairs and fours, doubles and quads, it's a foot steering assembly, so the athlete will pivot one foot in or out and that attaches to a rudder assembly near the stern of the boat and that will steer the boat. Um, quite difficult to do while you're rowing and you're pulling as hard as you possibly can and you have to very delicately steer the boat. In the largest boats, the eights, there's a coxswain and the cox fours, there's a coxswain um, that has tiller ropes, uh, two attachment points to the rudder at the stern of the boat that they will steer the boat while they're, they're commanding the crew. In those days, we were rowing in, in uh, wooden boats, and we had a uh, we had a, 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 a double a four uh, with uh, that was that was too heavy. It was uh, more than uh, three or four kilos heavier than the, than the limit was. But we had no, nothing else. We we raced in that boat, and it was a wooden boat. And later they they we switched to more carbon boats and. Uh, they can make it just like you want and as, as light as you want. The shape is just developing a lot. And not, not, not that much, you, you won't see it, but if you have a really eye for that, there's a change in the shape. If you, if you take a four that was built in 84 and you have a four that, that is built now, you see the difference. Yeah, rigging the boat is just a, what, what I do myself. And it, it's always, uh, of course, uh, connected to my rowers and what they feel and what they want. That's all about rigging, I think. And uh, that's, that's, yeah, that's something that comes very close to, uh, to my coaching job also. That's, that's what I do myself.